What is up my friends? We are back with a bit of a look ahead to the game against Arsenal and of course with it being Arsenal there's nobody else I'm going to do content with other than my friend Mr Lee Gunner. Lee how are you sir? I'm very well Craig thanks for having me on uh, pleasure as always and um, yeah you lot are flying uh, we're struggling but we're still hanging on for dear life at the minute so yeah this is gonna be interesting this weekend for sure. And, Speaking um, of flying, got... mate, I want to congratulate you on your uh, YouTube Silver Play button. I've seen you got past 100,000 subscribers. Very well deserved, and I'm absolutely thrilled for you. No, bless up, mate. I appreciate it. And you've, uh, you've always shown me love as well, so thank you very much. And, hey, um, I take yeah, pictures, I find them. And like I've always said, you've been nothing but a friend to me over the years. Always checked in, and we always have a kind word to say. And uh, I don't listen to other people, mate. I take people as I find them, and you've been nothing but sound to me. So thank you for that. Appreciate it, man. And likewise as well. And listen, you're on the road to 300. So uh, the half a mil is nearly there. You're getting there, Craig. You're over halfway to half a mil. Hey, look, I don't know, man. I feel like I've been blagging this since day one. So let's wait and see. <laughs> what the, uh, let's wait and see what the football gods have in store for us. So you know what? I want to get straight into this because I have a question for you that I don't think gets spoken about much. Uh, maybe on your channel it does, but on else, other channels I haven't seen it. At what point does Mikel Arteta start to come under a bit of pressure, Lee? Because there's no doubt he's progressed Arsenal a bit since he's come in. He's been backed quite well by the owners. At what point does that one FA Cup start to not be enough for Arsenal fans? When do they want a big trophy before they give him his flowers properly? Uh, that's a great question, by the way, because I'll take any trophy this season. I can't lie. I just want a trophy. Yeah, as I said to you backstage, it's fi as we recorded in this, it's 1,543 days without a trophy. So I'll take a League Cup and finish sixth if we have to. I'll take anything because if we don't win the league, then for me, it's kind of irrelevant. Yeah, Champions League's great, but we're not going to win it. We don't do enough to go and win it. You guys have got heritage in that. We've got no heritage in Europe. So, you know, it's not like we're going to go and, oh, we've got a chance to win it. So I'll take any trophy. But the general consensus at the start of this season, from what I see over socials, um, within the fan bases, they don't want the League Cup. They don't really care about the FA Cup. They want the League or the Champions League. I don't think we're winning either, if I'm honest. And I do think that um, with the, the lack of signings in the summer, we've gone backwards um, in terms of squad depth. We've actually registered 22 players, not 25. We've got the smallest squad in the league. When we were that close for two titles in a row, we've gone backwards squad-wise. I don't really see how we're going to do that. And I think a lot of people, if we don't win anything this season, I think that depending on where we finish, I've seen a lot of people say that if he finishes lower than second without a trophy, it's time to go. But then on the flip side of that, they then use that word context and say that, you know, if we get to a Champions League final and lose on penalties or something and finish third, then we'll keep him. So I don't know, Craig, if I'm honest. I, me personally, I think... If we don't win anything this season and say your manager finishes above us, yeah, or Chelsea, yeah, or even Man United or Tottenham if they get their acts together, yeah, then I think that I think that'll be the end. I think it'll be gone. I have to say though, mate, I think genuinely you are title challengers. You are up there and deservedly so. It's I think we've both been incredibly unlucky that we've been up against this all conquering Manchester City team for whatever reason, that in years gone by Arsenal probably would have had a few more trophies. Liverpool probably would have had a few more trophies. So I don't mean that to sound disrespectful because I do appreciate how far Arsenal have come on and you are playing some really good stuff. Very solid. Greatest defence in the Prem last season. I don't think anybody would doubt that. But it's just always felt to me like if this was Liverpool or United, the pressure would be there to win one of the big ones. Yeah, I think the reason for that, you, you two are the two biggest clubs in England. You can argue which way round it is until the cows come home but you are the two biggest we're the third biggest but I feel like because we held on to Wenger so long and there was that attachment emotionally to Wenger because of what he did when he first came in I feel like especially when he came out and said top four is a trophy I feel like that's kind of diluted this fan base massively yeah and I'm not just solely blaming Wenger because listen he was great for the club at, at a certain point I felt at the end it was time it was definitely time he had to go he should have probably gone after the whole City Cup final let alone the when he did go, but I think that within our fan base, we always we always have an excuse. Yeah, whereas I feel like Liverpool do actually call their stuff out. Like we've seen years gone by when you protest, I think it was against Sunderland about ticket pricing, and you all walked out in the 77th minute. Yeah, I think you were 2-0 up, and then it went to 2-2, and then they scrapped the, the raise of the tickets. 
We don't do that, Arsenal. Man United with um, storming the pitch, getting the game called off against Liverpool, the live game on Sun- Super Sunday that time. And then they were looting the club shop and all that. I mean, that's crazy. But that summer, they then brought um, Varane, Ronaldo and Sancho. We don't do that. Yeah, we, we don't tend to do that. We tend to be the classy club, the nice club. And let's be real, Craig, this, this, um, this game's uh, ruthless. Yeah, there, there is no time for being nice and classy. You just have to do what you've got to do. And unfortunately, we don't do enough as a club. I feel that your club don't do enough with ownership, but you had a world-class manager that got you over the line every time on most times. And if he didn't, he competed for everything until the very death most of the time, which meant he would nick something at some point against Pep. Um, we've won one FA Cup in five years. And, well, four and a half years as it is now. It'd be five years. Yeah, five years he's been manager. So, yeah, in five years he's won one. And that'll be five years in December. Whereas if you look at what Liverpool and Man United have won, and Man United have been in the doldrums for years, and they've still had loads of trophies. Well, not loads, but they've had a fair few. They've had more than us. Ten Hogs, a rubbish manager, in my opinion. He's won two trophies. Why? Because he knows he's not going to win the league, so he took the Cup Series. Whereas I feel with Arsenal, we're trying to go from here to here. Just try and get something along the way to get to there and still progress at the same time. It's what Klopp did. And that's why I rate Klopp, because as soon as he took the job, he got to two cup finals. Then he got your top four. Back-to-back Champions Leagues off of that. Title races. You were winning trophies. You were winning major ones, but you were also winning the other cups. You know, his last cup was the League Cup. Jose, when he came in, first trophy, League Cup. Pep won four in a row. Yeah, it breeds winning mentality, whereas I feel with Arsenal, there isn't any winners really in our club, or especially winners that have won at our football club. The only one that was that started that final that's still here is Kieran Tierney. And Saka was on the bench. They're the only two players at our club that have actually won something at our club. Yeah, and I feel that's the difference. Like We need to get over the line with something to be able to kick over the line against Pep for a title. So, obviously, this summer you've seen Liverpool change manager, brought in Arne Slot. As a non-Liverpool fan from the outside, what's your first impressions been of his time at Liverpool? It surprised me, I can't lie. Um, when he got the job, I thought, yeah, a bald Dutch man coming into a North East, uh, Northwest club. I thought, yeah, OK, Ten Hogs won two trophies, the aim of the game, but this could go one way or the other. Though. I thought there'd be a drop-off after, Klo- um, after Klopp. But I think that instead of playing this heavy metal football that you were playing under Klopp, and I do feel like he, he looked worn out. I can't lie, he did. He looked knackered. And I think the team probably got bored of listening to him. Yeah, same same manager, same voice year in, year out. Some of them have been there pretty much all the way through. I said that, Lee, so like... many times, bro. You can only go to the well so often. You can only give that you know, rousing speech so often before it begins to lose its impact a bit. Yeah, and especially if you're not, not winning the major honours. Like when they've won major honours or competed, I know you got all the way and were two games away of a quad. I mean, that would have been ridiculous. Yeah, but I feel like this manager you've got now, you've still got the attack, albeit I think that none of your attackers are really clinical. Yeah, Salah's lost a yard of pace by the looks of it, but he can still bag goals. He'll still bag 20 goals this season. Yeah, um, but I think defensively, you look so much better. Yeah, I I watched a game the other day um, against Chelsea and that was one of the best defensive performances Trent's had for a long time. And uh, I'm very critical of Trent. I say he can't defend this and that. But the way the slot's setting you up, you're not going gung-ho. I mean, the game the other night, you didn't go gung-ho in that game. You shut up shop really at 1-0. Yeah, and just chilled out and said, right, we'll rest up some of the big guns for the weekend. So I think that's the major difference. Yeah, Gravenberch has been great this season. Yeah, I rate McAllister highly. I know he had a little knock, I think, or he had a cold or something, so he didn't play so much recently, um, last couple of months. But when he's in the team, I think you look so much better with McAllister in midfield. Uh, that guy's so good to watch. And he just keeps everything ticking. He's not flashy. Yeah, but he's one of them players. He's a little bit like, um, I'm not putting him on that level, but he's a little bit like Tony Cruz. You don't know he's on the pitch half the time because it's just easy. Like, and think, oh, blooming hell, yeah, he's, he's had a really good he, game. He's, he's not done that, anything stupid. When he's not there, you see what isn't on the pitch. He's, I get where you're coming from. He definitely is one yeah. of those. Silent, if you notice him, he's had a bad game, but forward. you're noticing him at the end of the game when you're going, do you know what? Looking back at the highlights at full time, when they show the highlights at the end of the game, you go, do you know what? Yeah, I didn't really notice anything outrageous from him. He didn't have to do a last ditch tackle. Yeah, he weren't like falling over flat on his face. So he got skinned. Yeah, he's a top, top player, mate. And it probably helps that he plays for Argentina as well. Yeah, because like he's playing with top players there as well. And he's got Messi in the team. And no, he was a major part of that team that won that um, World Cup. He was outstanding in that World Cup. And I feel like if you keep him fit all season and keep Gravenberch fit all season, 
and your centre backs. I don't really worry about your front line so much because you've got so many of them. You'll score goals. But if you keep them centre backs fit and them two in midfield, I think you've got a great chance to win it. I can't lie. I think we're certainly being underrated a little bit. I mean, I'm trying to be realistic and say there's a long way to go and I'm certainly not counting my chickens yet, but like you touched on at the start, Lee, I, I can't but be impressed with the start that Arnold Law has had. 11 wins from 12. I mean, the first six, the first Liverpool manager to win his first six away games as coach, we've mm. defensively looked a lot better. And I agree, we're not as gung-ho in attack. I think that's more than fair. But I want to just concentrate on you boys for a minute now because obviously a lot of players questionable for this one at the weekend Saliba sent off so he you know you accepted that plan so he's out for one game Saka looks like he could be available if I'm right and then obviously Odegaard is touch and go but probably not going to be no, there Odegaard's long with Calafiori no Odegaard, Odegaard's well out I don't think we'll see him until December yeah he's he's not he's not nowhere near um I think Tim I'm pretty sure in saying Timba and Saka have trained mm -hmm. but Again, I can't be 100. I know Saka has, but I'm pretty sure Timber was as well. Um, but defensively, Calafiori, uh, I don't think I play, but that'll probably do us a favour. Yeah, he went off the other day. I've not had an update on that yet as, as I'm recording this with you. But I reckon that could be about a six-weeker. That looks like a, a little MCL or something he done when he's done the splits and twisted his uh, knee and ankle the other day. So I think he'll be out. So defensively, yeah, he's been poor anyway defensively. Like, there's he? been this massive, really? Because yeah, we were, I we were obviously rubbish, linked with him to some extent and we were we were kind of excited about the prospect of it. And then obviously you guys went in, got the job done and I thought, well, they've got themselves a good player there. Well, yes, yeah, to, to be honest with you though, Craig, yeah, there's not one single centre-back that I've seen from the Italian leagues that's directly transferred from Serie A straight to the Prem that has actually done well. Like really well. Yeah, Ogbonna at West Ham. But I'm talking centre-back, yeah. That directly comes straight from there, straight to the prem. He'll be the exception to the rule, and he looks erratic, mate. Like every game we've played, pretty much, he's been all over the place. Yeah, and I understand new league, faster pace, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I'd rather Zinchenko play over him, and that's how bad it's been for me. Like Arsenal fans will probably disagree with that. Yeah, but going forward, he looks all right. Like he's got a screamer against City. Like his passing's not bad. But defensively, he is literally just the same as Zinchenko at times. Yeah, but I think Zinchenko's got better footballing IQ on him than this guy. But I don't want either of them starting. <laughs> Hopefully Timber's fit and we could put Timber at left back. Yeah, and yeah, I don't know what we're going to do defensively. I'm going to obviously have to um, see what the lineup's going to be. But if it was me, I'd put Declan Rice at centre-back with Gabriel. He used to play centre-back, so I'd put Declan Rice in at centre-back. I mean, from the outside perspective, we're all a big admirers of Saliba. We think he's a great centre back. Any of the Liverpool fans I've spoken with have him right up there as a Virgil Van Dijk clone, if you want to call it that. He's uh, he really is top notch. So we never want an injury on a player, but it, I'm not going to sit here and lie, mate. It definitely helps us out that he's not going to be available for the Especially weekend. Especially with Odegaard out as well. I mean, Odegaard, another player um... I'm a huge fan of. Huge fan of Odegaard. I think he's a great footballer. Yeah, see, like it's, it's weird because like, I predicted this, Craig. Like I predicted this season we would have injury after injury after injury because we were very lucky last season with um, with injuries to key players. Then obviously the Euros, the Copa America. I know Odegaard never played, but and he actually looked really good at the start of the season. Odegaard pre-season he was flying, he was doing well. Yeah, and then he went on for, um, Nations League with his country, caught his foot in the grass, and that's the end of that. And it's like, and this is why I was so frustrated that two things really. Number one, we didn't go and get a replacement in the summer because we needed a backup or someone to push him. Yeah, we needed a striker. We needed a Saka replacement or backup or somebody to help him out. Yeah, we needed another midfielder. He went and bought Moreno, who I don't rate one bit. Yeah, I used to, I watched Sochstead last season because Tierney was there and I watched La Liga anyway. He ain't it. He ain't good enough. Yeah, Xhaka's better than him. Miles better than him. Yeah, and it's like now all of a sudden these things are coming to fruition and we've got a kid who sits on the bench who can play number 10, who's looked good in every game that he's come off the bench, and Ethan and wary, and he don't play him. He's just bringing him on with pity minutes for 10 minutes at the end of games. 2-0 down to Bournemouth, he brings him on, throws him to the Lions. It's like, come on, I'm going to kill his confidence, man. What's he supposed to do? Hey, why don't you start him? And that's why, like, this weekend against you, I'd go with Rice at centre-back. Yeah, I'd play Party and Marino, um, or maybe Jorginho, and then I'd play Ethan and wary in number 10. Yeah, because in that way, we've got somebody that can go forward because all of our midfielders, other than him, that, that boy, Odegaard's obviously out, but all of our midfielders, they're slow. Yeah, they don't progress the ball very much. I know Party does, but not to a, high, a very high level consistently well. 
yeah he's more of a a, a blocker yeah and then just pass it six five yards yeah whereas we need somebody with that defense splitting pass i think Ethan can do that i know party can do it but the way we play and have played this season yeah all of our midfield he's been the best of a bad bunch party yeah we've been awful in midfield this season which is why we've started leaking goals again which coincides with calafiori coming into the team yeah, it's like as soon as Califuri has come into the team, when Timber went out, we've conceded seven goals, I think. Do you want a mad stat? Connor gave me a stat yesterday when we finished our game, and I couldn't believe it when I read it. Uh, Darwin Nunes has two more tackles this season than Declan Rice. Two more successful tackles. <laughs> make that make sense to me, mate, because, look, I know we defend from the front at times, so it's not unusual, but... You know, I think of Declan Rice with the utmost of respect, a great midfielder. And to, to see that stat, I thought, well, either Declan Rice is just really good at intercepting balls. Or there's something a bit astray there. So I wanted to ask you for your take on it. Um, what's going on with Rice in midfield? If that's that, which it is correct, how does that make sense? It, it, um, I don't know. Like we, We've been so poor. Honestly, the way we get walked through in midfield at times is embarrassing. Literally two passes and they're through. Like one pass against um, Brighton. I know we had 10 men, but even so, defend properly. One pass, clean through the whole team. Yeah, it happened again the other night and the guy tripped over the ball as he was going clean through for Shakhtar. It's just one pass and it's like, he's been poor since Aston Villa last season when we threw the title away. He went to the Euros, I thought he was poor. Yeah, and then he came back, uh, scored against Ireland. Um, that upset everyone. <laughs> and then, and Gre- um, of course, it was him and Grealish, mate. Of course, it was. <laughs> I, do, I said this on the stream. I said, you can tell which one plays for Arsenal and which one plays for Man City. The one plays for Man City celebrated like mad, and the one for Arsenal was like reserved. And oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're just still going to boo you, Declan. <laughs> like, we are. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but our midfield's rubbish, mate. Honestly, it, it's so poor. We we let so many players go. Yes, I didn't rate most of them. But at the same time, I expected us to go out there and do better than what we did. And bringing in this Mikel Marino is no good. Yeah, I wanted Danny Olmo. Yeah, I wanted Paulinho. Yeah, I wanted Elise for the right wing. Yeah, I wanted a striker. I would have took Dovbik from, from Girona. He's gone to Roma. We could have had him and Morata for 40 million. I and always thought box. Sesco might end up at, at you guys. Again, another one we went in for. Bid rejected. He signed a new deal. And he's flying this season. Jokic is another one. Flying this season. Like it's got a cracking goal the other day. Like, and this is the thing, like adding all of that up with the sales that we gave out, or the sales like for Smith Rowe and players like Eddie and Kea, we wouldn't have spent that much more money. We could have bought Morata for 10 million. Yeah, he might be a donkey to a lot of people, but he's a winning donkey. Yeah, and he's somebody that would be happy to sit on the bench and you throw him on for 20 minutes or you start the odd games against Southampton, Bournemouth, Leicester. Yeah, maybe not so much in the big games, but you know, 10 million quid. Instead, we're going with um with 29 up front and Gabriel Jesus, who couldn't couldn't hit a barn door he's rubbish as well and it's another player that should have gone in the summer but we're in a mess mate and I think like we're in a good position in terms of league positions and that but in terms of the players that we're paying the squad that we have we this season is going to be long mate I might I wonder, end up like you that my thought I had my hair cut today my hair, hairline's gone back another inch everyone's <laughs> gone bald mate even Usyk's gone bald it's the way to go I'm telling you you won't, you won't regret it if you ever do uh, he looked like an assassin by the way in that uh that presser with, with Tyson Fury. I want to get a prediction mm. off you, Lee, before we finish up, but I also want to get your thoughts on the appointment of the official. I don't know how Arsenal fans view Anthony Taylor, so maybe oh. give me a, a few words on him. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Arsenal, Anthony Taylor, he's won us two cup finals. I love him. He should have a statue outside the Emirates. Uh, 17, 19, uh, 2017 and 2020 cup finals. We played um, Chelsea in both. He was, the, he was the ref and he sent a player off in both. Cheers, Anthony Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, yeah I'm not a fan uh, m- most people I've spoken to aren't a fan particularly London clubs actually Chelsea aren't a fan of Anthony Taylor whatsoever Spurs not oh, too Chelsea hate him it's um, yeah I just wanted to get your thoughts on that and before we finish no, up, no, man, I actually I think, it's... think he's sorry to cut in here I actually think he's not a bad ref but the problem is the standard of refereeing in England's on its arse anyway isn't it? let's be real it is and it I, I don't want to get into a rant on this but it does my bicky and that Sky are making me listen to that twat Mike Dean who admitted he didn't do his job and they give him they reward him with a contract and go, Here you go, here's the voice of referees, the man who admitted he didn't send Anthony Taylor to the monitor because he didn't want to get his mate in trouble. It's mad, isn't it? This is what Sky Sports is, mate. I can't stand them. They're they're the biggest problem in English football. Yeah, because they, they like I live in Spain, as you know. When um Tuchel got the job the other day for England, 
Yeah, I can't view anything on Sky Sports at all on on Twitter videos. On it don't even show up on Sky Sports football on YouTube over here. Yeah, all of a sudden I can watch Gar um, uh, Gary Neville, Jamie Carragher, I can watch Jamie Redknapp, Harry Redknapp, all having their say on it. You know, like um, who's that referee? What was his name? The ex -ma uh, manager of Sheffield United and uh, at Villa, Dean Smith was it? Is it Dean Smith? Whatever his name is. All of a sudden I can watch all of their content because they tried to peddle a narrative. Yeah, and this is what it is. I, I can't stand them, mate. Thankfully, I don't get it over here. But, but yeah, they're a big, big problem. And they they peddle narratives. They open it up globally for the narrative they want to push, like the Super League. Everyone in the world could watch the content then. Yeah, after they were charging fifteen quid to watch a bottom of the table clash, like in lockdown and that. I can't stand them, mate. They're a big, big problem. They are, and people I'm believe them because it's ex players you. sitting there saying it. I'm not too far behind you. I'm not a fan myself. I'm not. I'm. I, I agree with what you said about narratives as well. I, I do. I absolutely agree with you. Before we finish up, man, give us a quick score prediction. And people should know as well, I'm going to pop over to your channel for a reaction after the game as well. So hopefully I'm in a good mood. Um, as it stands, as we record this, <laughs> um, I'm saying 3-1 Liverpool. I wow. think we're, gonna, I think we're gonna get an early goal. I think we're going to shit the bed. I can't lie. Yeah, I think and if we get an early goal, you're in trouble. Yeah, because we're just going to do that dirty, stinky low block and try and counter. But I don't see it. I think you'll win 3-1. We have had an Achilles heel wrong. playing against low blocks. So I'm hoping you don't score first. So look, I would normally take a point and I think I probably still would at this point of the season. But with the injuries you have, you know, I'm not against the idea of us going there to look for the three points. I just hope that we don't lose. That's the most important thing for... If we lose, do you, if we lose, do you think we're done? Because we'll no. be stepping behind you. No, not done, but definitely need to put a run together. I mean, I've seen you and us and others pull back seven points, but it certainly is, is going to put the pressure on our Teddy, yeah. But I wouldn't say you're done, mate, no. Fairs, fairs. Yeah, because Man City have got Southampton, I think, at home. That's a win, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah so we, we can't lose. The pressure's all on us. Yeah, we have to win. Yeah, or at least not lose. Because if we, if we draw, it's not the worst result. I don't want to draw. I want to win. But... If we lose and Man City win, obviously you both go further clear. And I think we've got to go and play you at Anfield. That's never a good day. Yeah. And then Man City have got to come to the Emirates. So it's like, yeah, we beat them last year, deflected goal. But yeah, I'm not, I've, mate, I'm going to be dreading this game. I can't lie. It's not going to be easy. And I'm, I'm, gonna, look, I'm, I'm never expecting an easy game against Trevor's. you boys. So I'm still expecting it to be a tough one. I really appreciate you coming on, Lee, and giving up some of your time. I oh. always appreciate your uh, your viewpoints, and I always enjoy chatting with you. So um, I would wish you the best for Sunday, but you know I wouldn't mean it. So <laughs> I'll catch up with you on your channel afterwards, bro. Nah, Tom, man, thanks for having me on. Big up to all the viewers that are tuned in as well. You always show me love when I come on here. So bless up to all of you lot. And make sure, yeah, if you haven't subscribed to Craig, make sure you do, because he's on the road to 300, and he fully deserves every single one of you to be subscribing. So big up to Craig. Thank you, my man. And of course, Lee's details will be in the description of this video. So make sure you go across and check out Mr. Silver Black himself there, Lee Gunner. <laughs> Lee, thank you, bro. We'll, we'll catch you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Oh,